Hello everyone, today we're going to be testing our app routes. So this is continuing in our React on Rails application where we're using React as our front end through a Rails API as our back end. The app route specifically is effectively just our routes file that we're going to be testing. If you'll recall from the previous video, we just have like a couple of different routes in here for our like our index page, our show page, our edit page and our new page. So we just want to create a couple tests that make sure that these routes are working as intended. So we have our git issue here. We've already changed to the branch. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. Right now, if we run our test, we should hopefully see that our navbar test is passing, which is great. Uh, there are some other tests we could write for our navbar if we were so inclined. But I think largely for now, we can just go ahead and say, this is probably good for now. When we run our um, when we start running our coverage, there might be things that we want to do differently. Because uh, in our test, I think we're only checking if both links are there. We're not actually checking where they go to. But I think for right now, that's fine. So let's go ahead, let's right click on our components and we'll just say this needs to be our app routes.test.jsx. So let's do that. And then let's go ahead and let's run our test again. And then we can see, well, you know, you have to have at least one test. And I feel like that's a fair bar for us to have for our testing suite. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's first start by popping into our navbar test and let's just copy these first two imports because we're gonna be using render screen and memory router again. But then instead of importing our navbar, we of course want to import the component we're using, which will be our app routes. Now let's come in here and let's say, all right, let's describe. So let's describe our app routes component. We can close it. And then in here for the first test, what I wanna do uh, I don't want to do whatever that's saying. I just want to come in here real quick and I want to set up a quick and dirty test just so that we have something to work with. So we'll go ahead and we'll close this. In here, we're testing the root path to make sure it renders the post list component. And for that, I just want to say render the app routes. We can give it a wrapper of memory router. We'll expect the screen get by text uh, post list to be in document. So let's go ahead and let's try this. Let's just run this and see what happens. Now, of course, by having that uh, that text on the screen, we do need to make sure that this text is actually in our app routes, but, uh, or sorry, in our post list, but instead we're actually getting a different error here. And this error is gonna happen as we start to move towards like things that actually provide functionality as opposed to our nav bar that just kind of has two links. So in the case of the app routes, if it goes to the post index page, for example, in the post index page, it's gonna try and like do the API URL stuff. So we have two different approaches here. We can either say, all right, well, we need to make sure the API URL is working, which is what we're gonna have to do when we test our post list. Or we can say for the sake of our app routes, we can assume that the index page is already working. So we should mock an index page where it's just like some basic text on the screen. And then we could say, if we go to this route and we see this basic text, for a fake route. That means that the router itself is working and it's taking us to where we expect to go. And then if the index page isn't working, we're gonna rely on the test specific to the index page to tell us something is wrong so that our app router tests don't fail if something's wrong with our index page. And I think that's a better way to do this. So to handle that, we actually wanna come in here and we wanna mock up our index page. So let's take a look at how to do that. We can just call just.mock to start off with. We can mock something, which is going to be dot dot slash. And I think we have it in features slash post slash post. What was it? Post posts list. Great. Absolutely love that I named it. That makes it super easy to talk about it in a video recording over and over again. Uh, and then, OK, in here, we can either return a function or we can just declare something like const mock posts list is equal to an arrow function. And then in here, we can just say, uh, let's I don't know. Here's your div. So we'll say div. And then in here we can do your matcher for posts list component here. And then down here we can uh, just actually, I keep doing this. This actually needs to be a parenthesis and not a brace. Let's change this. And then we can just return whatever that variable was. And now we're good to go here for our mock. Now in our test, we need to tell it to actually use this mock, which 
kind of weird, but you, you kind of also don't really need to tell it to use it. So what we're going to do is uh, we're expecting the screen get by text. We'll just go ahead. We'll try to run this, but there might be some additional tweaks we have to do. I'm not really sure because I'm trying to mess with this a little bit. Uh, so it looks like it's still complaining about the API thing. Okay, now I seem to still be getting this error, which is my fault for how I'm trying to teach this. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump around a little bit to hopefully take care of this. The reason why we're getting it is because in our app routes, we're importing a bunch of different things, and these things are going to be using the API URL. So in our components here, if we jump through these real quick, we should be able to see which ones have uh, a API URL in them. And then we can go from there. So I think the ones that are going to be the culprit are going to be the post details and the post list. So we're actually going to take this and we're going to mock up a post details as well. So we'll change this to be the post details. And then this will be the matcher for the post details component. And then we can just, oops, this should be the post details component. And then we can return this as well. And we'll see if this gets rid of our errors real quick. Uh, in theory, if we mock up all of the things that are uh, trying to import this API URL, we should be good. So this one right here is coming from our post details again. All right. I was originally trying to circumvent having to cover this right now, but I guess if we're going to keep running into our little, uh, our little error with the API URL, we'll just go ahead and we'll mock this as well real quick. Uh, we shouldn't be getting this mock in or this error in the long run, but because of how I want to cover this, I think we're going to keep running into it until uh, we do this real quick. So in our app routes, we're just going to, for now, add in another mock, which is going to go to, it's actually going to be one dot dot slash up to our constants file right here. So we're mocking our constants file and we're just setting an API URL for some, you know, some dummy text. And then let's go ahead and let's run our test again. And that should get rid of our uh, API URL error. And now we should just be running into an issue with our post list, which makes sense. So the reason why we're specifically getting an error for a post list is because over here, uh, it's expecting it to render post list, but instead it's rendering your matcher for post list component here, which is of course our mocked post list. So we just want to come in here to our get by text and we want this to be our expected text. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to say uh, const expected text is equal to the string with our matcher right here. And then we're going to get by text for our expected text. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this again. And that should hopefully clear up that error. So now we're good to go there. So now let's go ahead and let's mock up some of these other uh, things real quick. Again, generally not that big of an issue. Uh, it's just when you try to cover things in a specific order, it can add like additional, you know, nonsense that you have to cover. Now, for our post list, we're going to have something very similar for our post details, which is going to beg the question of whether or not this should be like a single function where we pass all this stuff in, because uh, it doesn't really make sense for us to be, you know, mocking stuff repeatedly like this with a bunch of uh, code that we're running multiple times. But for the sake of this video, we'll just have our mocks up here. And then if you want to refactor it, you're more than welcome to. So for our post details, we'll come down here, we'll do another test. Uh, right here, say so test post details path renders post details. We're going to render the app routes. We'll give it a wrapper of memory router with an initial entries of post slash one. We'll set the expected text to be the expected text, and then we should be good to go there. But we do need to close this because Copilot doesn't always catch everything. I'm hopefully hoping that as we go through and we mock these, we run into some issues. So there we go. So what we're getting here is uh, a matcher for a post list component here, which doesn't really make sense. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what it's actually rendering. So we can see here our initial entries is our post slash one, and this should be, this should be putting our post details, but instead it's putting uh, the post list component again. So why is that? Well, it's kind of because of how we're structuring these tests right now. So we kind of need to like refactor this to not be using this render and we need to be using the memory router more uh, in a slightly different way. So let's come up here to our describe and right below our describe, let's create a new const. We'll call this render with router. We'll set this equal to, we'll have to uh, do as GitHub Copilot was just suggesting a UI. Then we want to pass in some initial initial entries equal to, and this one's just going to be the root path for now. And then after this, we can come outside of this brace. We can set this equal to an empty object, and then we can do an arrow function, I think, just like that. That should be what we're looking for here. And then uh, if we come up in here, 
we should be able to say, all right, let's return the render. We'll pass in, oops, we'll pass in the UI and then we'll open up some braces. And then in these braces, we wanna say this needs a wrapper and this is gonna be for some children, children. And then if we come into here do another arrow function, hopefully this will make sense in a second. Uh, in here is where we actually want to set up our memory router, and I think GitHub Copilot did this correct correctly. So this will allow us to pass in the initial entries as well as the children into our memory router, which should hopefully get rid of that error. Now, the only error we're still getting here, of course, is uh, that the render with router is unused. But now because we're passing in the UI and the initial entries here, or we're setting the initial entries, uh, we should be able to come into our post details, for example, and instead of doing this massive render right here, we can just do, uh, let's change this render to a render with router. And then after the app routes, we can pass in whichever initial uh, entries we need. So I'm just gonna say initial entries is gonna be equal to post slash one, which does clean that up a bit. And we can also come in here and we can change this one to just be slash for the root of our application. So that cleans up our, our tests a little bit and it should also cause this to no longer fail. So let's go ahead and let's do this real quick. Uh, so for this test, let's say this needs to be slash new path renders the new post form. Then we can do a comma with an arrow function, just like that. Come down here, close this. And now in here, uh, we should be good to do something very similar. So I'm actually gonna take this, copy it, paste it into here. This is gonna be for slash new, your component for the, what was this called? Like the new, post form component. Uh, so it takes care of that. Now up here, we are gonna have to copy some code, which is kind of cringe. I hate doing this. Uh, and then we can change this from the new post details to the new post form. We can copy the new post form. We can change the variable name and the component name. Then we can copy the variable name, return it, and that should be good. Let's go ahead and let's run this. And now, uh, just as an aside, if you do have the proper extensions installed, you should be able to also click on like run here. You'll see run. This will try to open it in your uh, VS Code terminal. Now this can be a little weird depending on which directory you're trying to run it from. You might need to do some additional configuration because it might be trying to run this from like your root of your application. So like in your, in my case, in the video file where I have my Rails app, instead of trying to run it from the actual client app itself, if that's the case, the easiest way to do it is to CD into your client and then open VS Code in there. Uh, but it's really ultimately up to you. But this allows you to just run one test real quick if you need to, as opposed to running your entire test suite, which is pretty cool. Uh, but okay, so that takes care of the new post form. Let's go ahead and let's do the edit one real quick as well. For this one, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So we have slash post slash uh, colon ID slash edit, which is the structure we expect from our Rails app, right? So we're just mirroring that. That should render the edit post form. It should take us to slash post slash one slash edit. Uh, and then for our matcher, this is gonna be for the edit post component, which we can come up here. We can mock one more time. Uh, and I'm actually just going to copy the one that I already have. So you're just gonna set this to be slash edit post form. It's gonna be the mock edit post form. It's gonna be your matcher for the mock edit post form. And then you're gonna return the mock edit post form as well. Although, uh, I think the, this is actually incorrect. This should be the post edit form because my notes are different from uh, the application we're building here. So let's change this to be the post edit form. There we go. And now if we run, oops, if we run our uh, NPM run test right there, this should hopefully give us a passing test, but it doesn't uh, because our uh, text changed, which is good because that means that our test is working. So let's go ahead and let's copy this test right here and put this in for our expected text down here in our uh, in our expect. Let's also change this to be a const expected text again, set this equal to a string, and then we can do that, and then we can change this to expect the expected text, and then we can move this up here to save ourselves some vertical spacing. And now let's go ahead and let's run this test again, and we can see all of our tests pass, which is pretty cool. So now that we've done all of that, let's go ahead and let's do a get status. And we can see here, we wrote this entire test and we haven't changed anything except for this app routes test, which is good. It means we didn't have to change our code to write our tests. It, it can potentially be bad though, because that could also mean that you're not testing what you think you're testing. You never know. But for now, I think we're fine. So let's do a get add dot, get commit dash M and we'll say uh, post 
or sorry, app app routes test. And then we can just do a git push, right? Do a git push real quick, come over to our code. We full screen this, we can do a compare and pull request on this route, pull it into main. We did it. And then we can say create pull request. And then we can come over here and we can say merge the pull request just like this, confirm merge. And then we should see the issue close. If we go over to issues, it should be gone, which means we're done now. So that's it for the app routes. Those are probably the two easier components to test. Uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll start covering how to do the posts uh, components, and we'll also cover the uh, coverage options that we have available to us with Jest. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.